I was looking forward to uh, some of the bells and whistles that you guys had at the first. I don't know if your audience remembers the uh, the, the the octopus that didn't move. Cthulhu. The worst animation I've ever seen in my life. It was like it was animated, but it wasn't animated. Like I don't know what was going on, but y'all yeah. tried, and I appreciate the effort. Like, Tokyo tonight. Nothing. What's going on, man? Oh man, just you know, just out here living the life. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Dude, that was so crazy. We we had you on. Uh, it was you, my friend Erica Watson, who sadly passed, um, and uh, oh. a, the ghost of Tony Woods. He never <laughs> showed up. <laughs> hey, technically, I, he passed as well. He passed on the show. <laughs> <laughs> oh man but you you crushed it on that but it was such a fucking blast to talk to you about it well, i didn't know a, what it was, was a cool show I, I was looking forward to uh some of the bells and whistles that you guys had at the first i don't know if your audience remembers the uh the the, the octopus that didn't move cthulhu it was the worst animation i've ever seen in my life it was like it was animated but it wasn't animated like i don't know what was going on but y'all yeah. tried and I, I appreciate the effort like it's like it's all about the effort and the like it's the creativity because like you're like I, w- the audience might be hot maybe they'll think it's moving but it's not and they just went left and right like i don't know how <laughs> i think we had cut a hole in the drawing that i did and like and had him like kind of like move his mouth a little bit and you, I, my favorite is that you're shitting on me you're like aren't you don't you animate <laughs> like and this is all you can do and i was like yeah that's right because the mouth the mouth was moving like in where the nose was like i don't <laughs> I was it was early. Up, but it was it was cool. It was different. Yeah, it was, it was real. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate you doing it, man. It was nice. It was nice to have you on to the first one. Now we've we've come into our own a little bit with a different uh, different shit, but it's you know still the same kind of fun. Yeah. So you got the little fancy graphics. We got my name on both sides. This is nice. Oh yeah, yeah. We spared <laughs> yeah. no expense with those. You guys are doing it. Yeah, we're actually absolutely. I love that. So are you? Did you just do a set? Did you just come from doing a set? Yeah, and I'm about to head. Try to get maybe. No, one or two more in. Nice. That's one awesome. Yeah. When do you go to shoot the dry bar thing? I'm actually flying out tomorrow. Nice, so, man. Um, yeah, going to Utah. Yeah, so that, that's going to be <laughs> that's gonna be fun. Yeah, actually, and, I found a lot of my, um, I have a lot of relatives that live out there. Nice. Wow. Okay, cool. No, I'm, I'm actually lying. I don't know anybody. Oh, I was going to say. <laughs> I was about to say, you have a Mormon <laughs> section of your family. That was interesting. I know. I, for like half a second, I was like, I don't know if he's joking or not. So I'm just going to nod. I'm just going to nod. Oh, good. Good. I, I thought he was going to have like an uncle and seven aunts. <laughs> yeah, I literally know no one uh, from, from Utah. I, I was thinking about it. I was like, have I ever even met anybody from Utah? No. I've, I, know, I, like, I, thought I know of, at least. I used to have a boss who were, who who like tr- he was from New Jersey and at one point he had moved out to Utah, stole a woman. I mean he met he married her, but like he met his uh, he met I, he likes to say he met his wife in Utah. I like to say he stole a a, a woman from Utah because that's technically what you do. You rescue her uh, from her family and from no coffee or alcohol, and you know <laughs> being a part of some coven. Um, and then, uh, yeah, but he was living out there and he was like, it was fucking brutal. Cause he was a drinker too. And he's like, yeah, I got out there to do a, to do like a job. And he was like, and it was, uh, fucking brutal. Mm. So, uh, yeah. be interesting shooting a dry bar when no, like usually comedy people have one or two drinks minimum and now it's uh dry bar <laughs> totally dry. Huh? Yeah. That's, yeah. That's, I guess why the name dry bar, <laughs> Yeah, but they, they do pass out Coke though. So I feel like that'll even it out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, it's gonna be interesting. Like, I, I'm, I'm excited to uh, check it out. Yeah, my, actually, I think it will be my first. No, I was in Utah one time before, but like just real briefly. So, to um, do a gig or just for? Um, I forgot what I was doing out there actually, but I do remember being there for like real brief in Salt Lake City. I think, yeah. But yeah, it's not Salt Lake City is actually pretty cool. It's not bad. Um, and it's weird too because I feel like even when you're on the road doing stand up and stuff like that, you do find pockets of people who, who just love comedy and love to have a good time or whatever, no matter what state you're in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, actually, I do love the dry bar brands. I, I actually watch it a lot, so yeah, pretty, 
pretty excited to go uh, put my foot in this. You know? Yeah, man. It they put out I'm great. Bring, I'm bringing my own alcohol. No, just play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they they put out great specials. It's uh, it's really cool. A bunch of my friends have done it, and it's uh, and they do it really well. Yeah. Even better than Comedy I mean, uh, you know, uh, not to not Comedy Central, but I feel like Dry Bar has, like, a shit ton of views. Like, people have gotten, like, real, like, decent-sized audiences from that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that was, yeah, it's a pretty, pretty dope platform. Do you have um, you have a YouTube presence now? Um, Yeah, yeah, I do. So, uh, <laughs> actually, I was kind of ahead of my time, if you will. Um, <laughs> uh, no, I started, I like, actually, right when I, like, first started doing comedy, I, like, started d developing skits and stuff and sketches. And um, I mean, I put them online, but also kind of package it for like a uh, for TV. So I actually put package a TV show and put it out like on uh, local television. Then actually ended up doing pretty well. So I, I got a pretty good like following on uh, YouTube from that. Um, you know, made a little bit of money, uh, whatever. Um, but it was like before it was like really, really popular and like everybody because now like literally because that was before I guess you had like data plans. Like now everybody got unlimited data. Right. So like the last literally like in the last five years, I think it really changed a lot. So like people can like literally like just stream anything like all day on yeah. your phone. Yeah. Whereas um, you know, like uh eight, nine, ten years ago, like it wasn't as uh you know, I mean you could do stuff, but it wasn't like as convenient. So but yeah, so I, I do have a little bit, but I actually hadn't been doing it as much as I probably should be now. Cause uh, I mean it, it definitely is a lot of effort. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And it, it do it well as well. Cause I mean, sometimes you can just do like anything, but I I would like to be a little different and uh, try to, you know, add some uh, panache, like, you know. Dude, yeah. you're like the king of panache because, like, it's fucking, like, the, the shows that you put on in D.C., the, uh, um, uh, almost late night. yeah, almost late, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Those shows, I mean, they don't, they, I, I, the first time I did that. I was blown away, man, because you know how some, you know how comedians are. They hype up a thing, you know, they're really good with the graphics and shit. And then you get there and it's like, you know, you're in a barn. <laughs> like it's not, it's not that great. And you're like, oh, but man, I just remember walking into that. I think it was at, um, before it was the DC comedy loft, right? Or was yeah. it already DC comedy? I don't remember. Yeah. That was but it was, that's when we started it. Yeah. And it was like massage tables, drinks flowing, camera crew. <laughs> you treated the comedians really well. It was, it blew my mind, man. It was incredible. How did you start that? Um, actually, it was just like out the blue, really. Um, I never, I don't know, I guess probably uh it wasn't a great idea but like i never really wanted to do like my own shows really. right um uh, i don't know i just really have any interest it's like you know like a politics and stuff in there i was like ah, i just like go perform. yeah yeah but um somebody randomly had the date they were like well we have um <clears throat> like a thursday open that we had, have booked with the uh, comedy loft and um and they, i need to fill it before we like lose it so you, you just want to put a show on and i was like uh not really but then i <laughs> but it was like literally in a week and i was like but i thought i was like all right let me I was like, I give it a shot, you know. But why not? Whatever. And so I always mm -hmm. want to do whatever I do. Um, I always got to be a little bit different. So I created this concept, of almost ladies' night, like, like hit me, and um, yeah. And then we kind of so like incorporated comedians. I did like these created some segments to put in between. Um, you know, it was like a whole like production in a way. But we put together in like less than well, like almost like in a day or two, like the concept, and then put some uh, promotions out there, uh, like. And then next week it was sold out. So I think we had like over 300 some people packed in there. And um, then I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. Like everybody really loved it, like loved the idea. And I was like, well, let's keep it going. You know, so nice. then, yeah. So we started doing like monthly. So like every month we would do it and uh, just kept growing and growing. And um, then we moved and it kind of like reached the capacity. There. So we ended up moving to the uh, city winery, uh, which yeah. is a beautiful venue and like oh, uh, much bigger as well. And um, yeah, I've been packing that out. And uh, yeah, that actually just what I. Our first show back in, since the pandemic was uh, like last week. So, oh wow! Yeah, yeah. It looked like you guys uh, had a good time too. It was crazy because the that was one of the last shows I did. Yeah. The last string of shows I did before the pandemic hit, I did your show, and then uh, did the DC Improv, and then came back to New York, and then they were like, "Don't go outside anymore." <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, "All right, seems." Yeah, cool. you were probably the super spreader. It, it was all your fault. <laughs> <laughs> it was me. First, didn't need Jersey Brothers. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was me. It was, it was. You know what it was? It was after fucking Tony Woods took me out after the <laughs> after the improv. He was like, "Are you going home?" And I was like, "Uh, yeah." And he's like, "No, you're not." <laughs> it's like, "Oh, all right." I guess we're fucking. Yeah, going that's out. um. You gotta be prepared for that. You gotta get your electrolytes up. Uh, yeah, 
Dude, do some he, yoga before hanging out with Tony. Blair. Oh my god, fucking get some, crazy! Get some naps in. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how long have you been? Yeah. You you've been doing. When did you start doing stand up? Do you remember your first gig? Uh, I do. I do remember my first gig. Um, uh, <laughs> I always think. Actually, I think about that often. Um, I did like a. Uh, it was a little. It was a hotel, and they were doing these shows there. Um, nice. And I guess the guy kind of catered towards like newer comedians mostly. Right. And, but he had some like you know more uh, seasoned people in there as well. But uh, you know they would bring the crowds out. So mm -hmm. I remember doing my first set, and like I did well. I was like I kind of crushed. It. I was like okay, you know I'm doing pretty good. And it was like mostly you know, but. It was like a mainstream type of audience or whatever. Um, and I remember I was like, man, I'm crushing it here. Like, I can't wait to go to, in front of a black crowd. And so I went to like this like all black room and I was like doing the same material. And like, I was getting crickets. I was like, oh, no. <laughs> and uh, yeah, it was no sympathy laughs. So I was like, OK, let me um, like get back to the drawing board here. <laughs> right. Was that your when and then you got paid for that one? Um, Yeah, I think I did. Wow. Right off the bat. That's pretty great. Well, not not the first one, but the like the uh, next one I did. I think. Oh, okay. But, like it was, it was a couple of shows I think after that. But I remember, um, yeah, I just remember that contrast. I was like, I was so happy. Yeah, I'm about to kill it. Like I was pressed over there, and then yeah. you know, yeah, you, you learn your audiences. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's so weird, dude. I feel like a lot of comedians have the same experience. If they bomb the first time on stage, they keep going, and it gets a little whatever. But if you're crushing on stage, you automatically bomb the next show, no matter what. That's what happened. Like my first time on stage, I did really well. And then I was really cocky the second time I went up and they actually gave me more time because somebody had dropped out and they were like, hey, can you do 10 minutes? And I was like, sure. <laughs> <laughs> and fucking like ate it like horribly. And I was like, oh, all right, I guess it wasn't that good. It was brutal. Uh, <laughs> and then and then from then on in, it was like hit and miss, hit and miss. Yeah, I think like when you have people, you know, sometimes people give you like more sympathy things. And then you kind of learn like, oh, these people are really, you know, kind of learn like really what is funny and what's not. You know, kinda, right. Like, you know, did you start so, in DC? Mm -hmm. Yeah, oh, that's cool. Yeah, um, but did you start as an actor or did you start as a stand up first? Uh, man, you you got the uh Oprah questions in here. Let me, let oh, me... yeah, man, we're getting it deep. We, we, like, to, we like to dive <laughs> he, in. He's used this. to the last time, he, he wasn't ready for the, for the real no, no, interview. No. This yeah, this is a real. We yeah, want last to time know... I was asking you questions, like, this yeah, is I know. We want to get to know Tom. <laughs> it totally was. He was like, I got this, guys. You guys relax. I'm gonna take over. <laughs> <laughs> we were like, all right, yeah, yeah. yeah we want to get to know Tommy. There's a whole introspective uh, little conversation here. Oh, wait till we get to the end with the last few questions. You're gonna be uh -huh. fucked. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but let me see, acting and comedy. You know what? Actually, I I started as uh, actor first. Okay. Um, but I always wanted to do like comedic acting. The funny, ironically, is I I really don't enjoy talking. Like it's really, like my least favorite activity is just like talking. Like, I actually, I, I, I respect people who have like a gift of gab. Like, just yeah, can talk about like if I have a purpose to talk, like I'll talk, sure. Uh, but like, just to be talking about anything, and I think that's what like stand up is. Like, you just like I, people are usually really good. Like, they even on stage, they just be like rambling, yeah. about and just you're like, all right, you know, and it's just on and on and on. But, um, yeah. yeah, I really don't, yeah, I'm kind of like pretty chill dude, so um. Stand up was never like really crossed my mind. So I was doing uh actually what happened was I um after college I was trying to do a let me try the acting thing and I actually put I sent my like I took I, I took these bootleg headshots. So I went to um like the mall. <laughs> and it was like this glamour shot? Almost. It was but okay. it was like it's like so there's this mall in these well in Maryland called Iverson Mall. Okay. Which I don't know how it's still open, but like it's the most hood mall in, in, the, in the country. But um, it was so I went over there and I and there was like a little photo uh, place. And I was like, hey, can y'all give me can you do headshots? It was like Asian lady who was taking the uh, pictures. She was like, no. And I was like, you can't do headshots? And I was like, bad. She's like, no, 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 no headshot. And I was like, and like literally, I was like, so and I was like, no, but I'll just take a picture of my face. She was like, and I was like, can you take can you just take a picture of my face, or whatever? And then she was like, okay. <laughs> and I was like, what? I was like, maybe she didn't understand what I was talking about. So she went and just took some pictures and um I actually mailed those out. Um I sent like this casting agent and then I got actually I got cast for the wire. That was like my first acting gig. Wow. Like great. literally like I think a week or two later or something like that. And um and I was on there for like three seasons. It was a small part, but I was like it was consecutive. Right. So um yeah, so actually that was my first acting gig. And so I was like, oh let me try to get an agent or whatever. So 
um, I was looking up agencies and everything, and I found this one dude, and he was like from LA. Um, he had these connections or whatever, so I went to go meet with them. And then at the end of the meeting, he was like, yo, um, all right, you know, so if you're really serious about this, you know, you just give us a deposit for $800 or whatever, and, um, you know, take it, you know, and then we'll we'll get start getting you out there and everything. And I was like, I started to do it, but I forgot. I remember I, I was talking to my, I think I called my dad, and I, something that felt kind of funny. And yeah. I was, like, um, I was like, yeah, you know, I, I really want to do this. And then he was like, no, nah, no, nah, don't give nobody any money. And yeah. I was like, what? And like, I was like, I was getting mad at my dad. I was like, no, nah, but he's he's an LA agent. Like, you know, I'm, and now he's like, no, nah, no, nah, you can find something else. And like, and now I, I paused. I'm like, all right, all right. But I was kind of upset. But not learn later, you're never supposed to give anybody any money. No. Yeah, like for agencies, or whatever. Like you, you only get paid when they get paid, or whatever. I didn't absolutely uh, understand the whole franchise agency and everything. And I was like, oh, well, such I didn't fucking pay scumbags. Yeah. Damn. And um, and he did get people work, but you know, I guess he was like being kind of uh, crooked at the same time. But, totally. Yeah, so from there, I was like, well, how, what other ways can I, like, ex, you know, expose myself or whatever, get out there? And then I was like, oh, let me try stand-up, you know? Because nice. I always, like, you know, I always want to do more comedic acting, but I was like, let me, let me yeah, give this a try. So that that's actually what, um, yeah, actually how I ended up doing stand-up from uh, awesome. that experience. <laughs> so that's crazy, though, because what it, you had no training for acting, though. So did you take any classes when you were in college, or was it? Who just, said I wasn't trained, John? <laughs> well, hold on. <laughs> well, then wait. That's good, though, because then you, you skipped over that part because it sounded like you are like, I was in college. I decided I want to be an actor. This Asian lady took my photos, and I got on the wire. And I was just like, <laughs> how do you do that? <laughs> can, I, can I go back and do that? <laughs> so, actually, I didn't um, – actually, I didn't really have much training, but I went um, – so I went to Carnegie Mellon University, which is – the um top performing arts school in the country wow okay. and the top engineering program or computer science in the country and so those All are my right. two big interests so actually i'd like uh yeah. i'm having the double major and double minor so i did take but uh acting was my uh performing arts was like my like half of my minor or whatever so i only took like a couple classes but i did have a brief training at the top okay school in the country that's cool yeah no i'll have you here yeah <laughs> <laughs> no, that's fucking awesome, dude. Did you do any uh like did they did they just have classes for it? Did you guys wind up doing a play? Like what was your first acting? No, no, I that... did, like acting for non-majors. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's cool. So but then had, had I known, I was just like majored in it or whatever. Cause uh um, yeah. like everybody literally gets like big agent deals and like bookings oh, like wow. literally out of college. So um yeah, like all my friends, uh like they're doing like crazy things. Um uh, actually, in my in my uh, so, um, my man from uh, Hamilton, like he did, the, he was the lead in Hamilton. Um, wow. <laughs> like, yeah, everybody's Damn. like, and all you know, a whole bunch of people come from uh, from the from the school. So, um, sure, yeah, I probably took the wrong path, but hey, we're no, here. dude, well, you're fucking crushing it. So, I mean, you know, it all worked out for the most part, right? Uh, I, I, You're like I'd still rather be in Hamilton, but whatever you say, John. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is a pure stand-up. I could like... Alexander Hamilton. <laughs> yeah it's just the it's just the stand-up in me is like no but you're still doing gigs right and you're like no i don't want to be uh, <laughs> i would rather yeah. be on broadway i'm doing do all the open mics <laughs> <laughs> you know, i can just oh. walk in and get on the open mic right? yeah. <laughs> oh my god what were you gonna say you were you gonna say sometime Oh no! I was gonna say I have a friend. His cousin was uh was one of the cat was one of the main characters in Hamilton, and then he ended up being in the Heights. The dude's uh, Anthony mm -hmm. Ramos. So, he, oh yeah, he was making that move. I feel like Hamilton put people on trajectories. It was crazy, mm -hmm. crazy. Do, do you do other stuff? Do you sing or uh, outside like any other art forms too? Do you draw like John draws or no? <laughs> um, <laughs> do we have to bring up Cthulhu again? <laughs> Tom, Tom, Tom is like, I can't do work like that, but at, at times I can draw like John, apparently. Uh, <laughs> I think when he's on his A game, I'm not gonna compare, but uh, when he's trying to get a show off the ground, I might be comfortable. Uh, <laughs> uh, but no, I do I do sing a little bit. Um I I, I can hold my own, I'm pretty good. Um uh, hmm. uh, I can I mean, I, I can dance a little, you know, like I wouldn't say I'm like a dancer, but you know, I can, I do a little, I wasn't a dance troupe in high school, you know? Oh, good. <laughs> yeah, good. I, I'm, I'm an artiste, uh, you know, I'm multifaceted. I, I, nice. 
you. When you were growing up, did you feel like you were going to, did you see this as your path or did you have like something totally, were you like, I'm going to be a doctor? Yeah, no, actually I did. So, um, I, I, um, I think that's probably what like really piqued my interest in like comedy. Like, but I was more like, act, you know, um, comedic acting or whatever. So I would like do silly things around the house or like when my uh, family was over, like I would do like, just be entertaining people and they'd be like cracking up. And um, I could always like hear a studio audience laughing when I was like doing my little like monologues and everything. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I remember like actually in high school, we would do like these like Thanksgiving uh, skits or Thanksgiving um, like assemblies. Mm. Right. And so this is the strangest thing actually, when I think back on it, like uh, for like AP literature class, we, we were supposed to do something for, the Thanksgiving assembly. And like, I would create like these characters and, um, and I created this, actually I ended up creating a whole little thing. And it was like hilarious. Like this whole like little skits with different people. So we had like the rap group, the hot boys. we made this thing called the hot wings. And, um, <laughs> I did this, I made up this, like this preacher, I did this rep, uh, Jesse Jackson skit that I made up. And I did made up this preacher uh, skit where I was like, um, doing this whole Thanksgiving thing. He was like, and actually, I, I was thinking about that recently, so I, I was like, yeah, that's actually pretty funny. So I, I worked that into a bit. Like, there's actually the same thing I wrote in high school. I do, like, literally now, and it kills. Nice. Wow. <laughs> I can do that as a closer. So I was like, that. yeah, that's pretty funny. That's great, man. Cool. Did your So you went to performing arts school, so then your parents were kind of cool with your whole trajectory that they were just like, yeah, you know, he's no, going to no, be it wasn't a performing arts school. We just did a, a Thanksgiving assembly. <laughs> No, no, no. I mean, like your the college you went to was like the top of what you were saying. Like, like when they when that was when they decided when you decided that's kind of what you were going into. Do your parents care? Oh, um, yeah, I think they did. <laughs> <laughs> like they've always been supportive, but um, you know, I think they really wanted me to get more like the traditional. Sure. Um, it has some like good job offers coming out of the, like school. Yeah. Then I went and got my uh, MBA. Um, literally, it's just some like as a placeholder. So I was like, when I was sure. doing the wire, I was like, oh, well, let me do just okay. I, so I ended up like doing um MBA while I was uh doing that uh, as well. Uh, but yeah, I, you know, I think they were, you know, they just want you to be secure, like you know, stable, yeah, of course, stuff. And um, you know, coming yeah. maybe isn't the most stable career, uh, nope, financially. No, it is not. So. <laughs> We all learned that during the pandemic. We were like, oh, okay. We have no discernible skills outside of uh, comedy. That's yeah, great. But I've, actually, I've always been, I'm saying actually a lot tonight. I just noticed it. Um, but I've always <laughs> been pretty, um, I'm a pretty smart guy. So like when I was in college, actually, I did it again, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I'll cut it out. I'll figure it out. Yeah, edit those out. Um, yeah. Unactually, I, uh, <laughs> No, so I, I started doing the stock market like when I was in um Jesus. Yeah, in uh in no, actually when when I was I think it was like right before I went to college, uh that summer I had like an internship. So I took half my money and like started investing in the stocks. And oh, wow. just randomly and I um I always had these random like little things like pop in my head. And so I started doing that and I, <clears throat> I actually did really well. Like I think I made like over like um like over a thousand percent profit, whatever. So then I actually used that money. Uh, to like purchase some property. <laughs> wow, that's yeah, wild. So, um, yeah, so I might not be as stable, but I've always been kind of stable. You know, I got you know I'd rather be you know hustling, I doing different things. Do you feel like? And I got to ask you the stock or, or uh, investment question here too. Though. How do you feel about crypto? Uh, I think it's the same thing as the stock market. Like I think it's yeah. uh, it's crazy, but you can make some money on it. You I completely agree. Money. I I think I, it's weird to me that people shit on it. Yeah, I, you know, it's just, you know, I think it's, it's changed. Like, nobody really like changed. And nobody really understands what crypto is. Right. I mean, some people do, but it's like, it's the blockchain. Like, nobody can, like, even people who's like, who's these gurus, like, you can't write me a blockchain. <laughs> like, you don't really know. Like, <laughs> Definitely like, not. Right. Yeah, like, you kind of understand, like, what, but yeah, you don't really like, where is it at? Like, where is it going? But, you know, it's, it's viable. And, um, uh, I look at the same way the stock market. I think the stock market is crazy too. Like, it, yeah, it, same. It, it literally makes no sense, but you can make a lot none of, of it. Money does do it right? Yeah, yeah. But, none of it does. Money doesn't make any sense. Exchange good. None of that fucking makes any sense. Yeah, and then, then it's all speculative. Everything is speculative. You know, um, you can drive it up, drive it down. Like, there's really no rhyme or uh, reason. But you can find those patterns, and you know, you can present it in a more uh, stable or um, you know controlled mm -hmm. manner. But at the end of the day, it's just like. 
people talking about stuff and stuff happens and yeah um like what is a point like what are you what are you doing um you know it's not yeah and like yeah like you're talking about money like literally uh well our money has no uh value or backing yeah no nothing yeah, yeah. So and we all just uh, pretended that. Well, that's the thing. If, if we're all imagining it, I'm going to imagine uh, crypto is amazing and uh, it, has, <laughs> it has real world value and is only going to increase as time goes on. Yeah. That's my imagination. Honduras accepted it. Bitcoin is now legal tender in Honduras. Oh, right? yeah, that's true. Yeah. yeah. But I'm also pretty sure we all imagined Honduras. So I'm not entirely sure. I'm just kidding. To my Honduran followers, I'm so sorry. We are <laughs> huge in Honduras. We are so huge. We're we're it's that and this Texaco gas station outside of Utah. So if you see us, yeah, they're we, the home of the first dystopia. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that'd be a great sponsor. <laughs> Um, so what was the, so you did the, the wire and then you did a couple, I know you were on a, you were on a dating show. Um, how did you wind up doing that? Was it part of the stand up thing where you were just, you know what I mean? Like, cause I know stand ups do kind of like do the reality TV thing for a little bit, but did you audition as a stand up or did they just do it as you? Just my beautiful self. <laughs> how did it work out? Is it real? It is what it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've actually I always had a um I've always enjoyed reality dating shows like since I was like mm -hmm. I think it really hit when I was in high school. I remember like a lot of the shows like they had a limit date, uh blind date, the fifth wheel. Um so I I, I really always want to be on one. Um yeah. so I had an opportunity to do the thing. I was supposed to be for the love connection. And oh. whatever happened, like I I ended up not getting it, but then they called me up and said, hey, like, ABC has this new show coming out, and uh, they really want you to be on it or whatever. And same producers from The um, uh, Bachelor. Mm -hmm. And so I was like, oh, okay. And it sounded interesting, but it's called The Proposal. And so, um, uh, yeah, but so it was a little, it was interesting because uh, I, I thought it was, you know, they kind of pitched it a certain way, but then you get there, it was a little bit different. But, um, I right. mean, it, it was kind of real, but I did make some pretty good friends, and I ended up uh, winning. You uh, did. Yeah. Proposal. Yeah. So I am a, a reality star. Right. And it, <laughs> but did you, like, is it, did it ever get weird? You know what I mean? Like, did you ever kind of look at each other like, none of this is real? Like, did you, I don't know, I don't know how, I don't know how any of that works. Oh, you're muted, Tom. I was going to say, did you date afterwards or, or did you, like, did you have to propose? Did you have to marry? I don't know what went on here. Yeah, that was the thing. Like, I didn't, um, I thought we, you, you know, you could propose, you know, you could propose anything, like let's go on a trip or whatever. And then some people okay. did, but then, you know, um, so technically, I guess we proposed, and but I think we both <laughs> kind of looked at it like, you know, like, let's just get to know each other, you know, because like we yeah. really just met, and um, so we did like hang out a little bit afterwards, and uh, but actually we were we were a little bit incompatible, um, just on some like basic things, but like she was a great girl, like you know, and we're still friends, so. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. So you know, we're you know, just kind of taking it slow, just getting to know each other. But you know, um, we I got her backstage. Kind of... We're gonna bring her on now. We want to see what she has to say. <laughs> <laughs> she she says you never called her back. Uh, <laughs> that's crazy though. Yeah, I feel like because you're not. I don't think you're as. Are you as cynical as most comedians are? Because I feel like on the, I don't know you that well, like in the dating realm. But I feel like you got a good, healthy kind of like um you know relationship side am i wrong right i mean i would like to think so <laughs> yeah i think you are i i, I see i feel I'll, like you're the I'll, 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 my dates would say the same thing but uh i do think i'm there yeah. <laughs> that's what i'm saying man i feel like you're the least fucked up comic i know in terms of like uh wanting a relationship yeah um i guess like i i've you know, I, I always thought I would have like that, you know, the high school romance thing. But then, like, you realize people uh, are, like, people are crazy. They are, dude. So, I was like yeah. that in high school too. I went in high. I, I think I did everything backwards because in high school I was like super fucking romantic and like really thought like, you know, the whole thing was gonna pan out. And then, like you said, like you get. But for some reason, I got older and I was just like, it was just like chipping away. Where I was like, mm, nope, that's not gonna work. These people are nuts. <laughs> She's insane. And then I was like, I think I'm just gonna just gonna fucking cruise by myself for a while and keep on fucking and maybe some will work out. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if comedy like actually well, I mean, there are 
there are people who like a lot of comedians who get married and everything, but yeah, I think that probably may it does take a special woman, I think, to be with a comedian or absolutely or a special person to be with a comedian, or whatever. Uh, have you ever broken up with somebody because you knew you couldn't give them because that's like I, I was dating somebody for a while and then I wound up kind of breaking up because I knew they wanted like the white picket fence house thing, and then I was like, I'm going to live on an air mattress in LA off of credit <laughs> cards. So <laughs> I feel like we're on different different trajectories there for a bit. Yeah, I yeah, I think it it, it definitely is, is hard. Um but kind of going back to what you were saying a minute ago, I always so I have this thing where I believe that everybody like I feel like if you're like you're over like 25, 30 and you're single mm-hmm. and you don't want to be, like it's your fault. <laughs> Right, it's because I did. <laughs> so like, I was like, maybe there is some. Like, I feel like I'm very well adjusted, but maybe there's some kind of idiosyncrasies that I got because, like, I w- I also view it like a business. Like, if if any business had been like failing in the red for 20, mm-hmm. 30 years, like every year yeah. it's been it was in the red. Like, you can't say, nah, it was a customer. Like, nah, dog, it was it's the business. The model needs something. The business model needs to change. I agree. So, yeah. uh, well, maybe I guess even. I can- no go, no, go ahead. No, I was going to say, or maybe even like, cause I, I feel you there too, man. I feel the same way where I'm like, you know what? I've tried it a million times and it doesn't work out, but kind of sort of like, uh, you know, like a casual thing always kind of worked out better for me. And I like that kind of stuff too. But it was like, I feel like the, the whole partner business thing doesn't last for me. Like, I don't know why, but like, maybe they don't, and, and not to even fault them either, but like, it doesn't, I don't have that lifestyle. And I feel like they, you know, whoever I'm dating, cause I don't want to date another comedian. That's a rule. I've never, I've never hooked up with another comic. I've never dated another comedian. Cause I don't think I could handle the overabundance of show business in my life. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like two people, that kind of mindset going for the same shit all the time. Like, when do you take a break? You know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you, could you date another comic? I think I could. I don't know if I necessarily want to. Uh, right. I don't think I have like a hard red line, but I haven't. But um, yeah, I do think because like, you know, people at least, well, I guess it depends on what level you're kind of on too. Because I know early on, like all I thought about was like comedy. Like I'm trying like trying to run jokes past people. Yeah. Like, when <laughs> day, like hey, I remember hey, she was so sweet. Uh I ended up taking a girl, like, it was Valentine's Day, and I went to, like, I was like, uh, can we just stop at the open mic before we go to dinner? <laughs> like, I, I don't know, I was, like, so, like, in the, you know, in that thing. And now, like, I've also learned, I think part of it is, like, so um, really enjoying the journey. And I think that's with, with everything, enjoying, mm-hmm. like, the journey. And I think a lot of your, you know, a lot of stuff to come organically. So even your material, um, you have to experience life, too. So, like, I think a lot of times you get so stressed out like trying to hit the stages and doing everything because it gets yeah. a little addictive in a way too and you're trying to work out new things but also you have to just live life and enjoy yourself at the same time so having that balance but yeah it depends like if both people are like really like all right well um you know on that same thing and like y'all can't shut it off i think that that's a problem but because yeah, you know you i mean life is all about balance at the end of the day so yeah um, yeah yeah, it's one of the reasons why I never moved into New York, too, because I had plenty of opportunities to live into the city and do it like full time. But I had, uh, you know, I had my own apartment and I was young and I had an active social life. And I was like, so I'll just make the extra effort to, like, go in the city, do road gigs, do as much as I can on the road. But I also <laughs> wanted to have my friends and some kind of distance from it. And I think that helped overall. Yeah. But you know, who knows? I mean, I see other people who do it and they're like immerse themselves in it, but I also see people who do it and they're fucking miserable too. And I'm like, I don't want, I don't want to lose the love I have for comedy by diving into it and never coming out of it. Yeah. No, nah, I think that, I think that's a good point. And, uh, but I think it's all like the, well, I think that's tough because people always say like comedy comes from pain, but I don't mm. think it necessarily has to. No, uh, <laughs> yours doesn't seem to, you seem very joyful on stage. Yeah, yeah, I enjoy it. Now, um, and, but that's me. Like, I, I think I like to, um, I also like people that like me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, so I, I have that kind of more persona, but a lot, some people like, you know, it's not, um, they kind of have the opposite. And so I mm-hmm. think like that, and they're just kind of like telling their pain away, which works, but then I think, yeah, you, know, you have to be so well adjusted because there's, you know, you look at all the, the horror stories of people who, you know, uh, they're killing it with that, like the darkness, but it's also killing them. Yeah. Oh, so, absolutely. Yeah. You don't know which one's going to wind up, you know, catching up with the other first. And it's uh, hopefully it's not the, uh, 
not the true dark side of it. And just, you know, you keep it in the writing and the comedy or whatever, and you can separate yourself from it. But sometimes you see people run out of it. Yeah. Uh, do you, do you feel like, um, I mean, obviously we all evolved from when we're first on stage to now, but like, can you see clear distinctions in your, uh, you know, performing style, writing style, like from when you started to now? Yeah, no. Okay. I, <laughs> I go back and look at some like old tapes and I'm like, man, like the writing is brilliant. And I thought it was like, it was so funny, but it was the delivery or um, the stage present, which was lacking. Right. Okay. And so I think, and that kind of goes back to, I was saying, I really never really, I wasn't, I don't, like I shut it on and off, but like I, it's not like I don't really like talking. So I think that yeah. part of it is like when I first I was like, hey, you know, jokes could be like, like thoughtful, like and like people should be able to get it, and like you know, you don't have to do all this extra stuff. And and like I thought in my mind, like some of that stuff was cheating when you do all the little like ad libs and oh yeah, uh, that kind of stuff. Like yeah, just make write a good joke. And but then it's like, and I was looking back, I was like, man, like that was actually really funny. But like I, you know, I didn't sell it. I didn't. You could like accentuate it, like do different things, like your expressions, but all this stuff really, you know, works together. Yeah. So I think I've definitely learned, and it's still a growing process. Um, I'm, you know, learn some every, like, like every time I hit the stage, but um, of like using, like, you know, using your whole body, like, mm -hmm. you know, with the joke, um, but also like trying to be, you know, uh, structured in your writing, making sure that's like dope and um, a solid joke, but then, you know, just having the other little nuances. And I think that's, uh, part of like the growth I've seen, but uh, it's funny because I was like actually just looking at it, I was like, man, that was really good. And like, I was like, All right, let me try to rehash that and like, yeah, and bring it to now, like, you know, with my um, you know, and then I think another thing is like confidence. I think you know, it's where I had like, I don't know if this happened to you, but like when I first started, I was I thought I was the funniest person in the world. <laughs> <laughs> I don't make that like, all comedians like this thing, they're the best comedian in the world, and uh, which is like right. everybody has this like this hubris about them, but. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, I was like, oh, then I would like hit a point. I was like, man, I got a lot to learn. And, yeah. uh, and I was like, let me just try to like get better and better. And then, um, and now like, I'm still kind of like that, but then I'm like, it's kind of like a tone. Like, I think I'm really good, but then I'm like, you know, let me, you know, just stay the course away. Let me keep working. But, um, I don't yeah. know if you had that, like, yeah, no, you, the, I feel like when you're starting out, like, I feel the same way, man, especially with that first set, I was kind of chasing that high, which I was like, this is great. Like I was you know uh there was me and erica who you met i think erica watson who you met on the, la on the last show but she and i took the class together um the first time i was 20 and um she and i were like the funniest people in the class and then we are the only two that kept doing it and then um it got to a point where you know first set went really well hit and miss or whatever but i felt like i was always chasing the comedian i wanted to be or knew i could be in my head and you kind of have to like uh, you know, at a certain point, you're either inching up on that guy or you're not making it at all. And then I think people should leave. You know what I mean? Like if you're not making progress, I don't know if you felt the same way too, then you, you should leave. You know what I mean? Like after a certain amount of years, but I kept catching up to the comedian I wanted to be. And then, and, but I feel like you're always slightly it, the, who you like, as good as you want to be in your head, I feel like you're always just a little bit behind that. And I think that's how you still keep growing. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, like you still think you're like, I'm really good, but then you'll see somebody or you'll see a thing or you'll have a night where you're like, I still have more to learn. Mm -hmm. But I still think, I think that keeps you good. You know? I think what also was also kind of funny is like people who kind of don't do what you're saying, but like they kind of keep that same. I know like, yeah, you know, comedians are just like had that same set from like 10, 20 years ago. You see like, it's on the exact same thing, but it, some like, so, I mean, I look at it as like, it's a testament. Like, like you got material that could work like for 20 years. <laughs> yeah. Right. Or, it's relevant. or they're just forcing it to, I mean, yeah. I, how many people do you, I, I don't know. Like the DC scene seems pretty good, but I don't, I don't hang around it enough to know, you know, if there's any hacks in the area, but I mean like I, you know, over here, like I used to work with dudes who would like still do Clinton material. <laughs> and I'd be like, really? Are you like the fucking blowjob shit? You're still doing it. How's that possible? And they'd be like, yeah, I saw, I saw this the other day come up and no, you didn't. <laughs> it's impossible there's no way you fucking saw that shit but it was but you know what those i feel like those guys too were you like you know i would go out on the road with dudes who were you know bitter and i was like i never want to be that so i felt like even though you know it wasn't they weren't the greatest dudes or they, they didn't have the best set or whatever i just learned from them because i was like okay this is also who i don't want to be so there was the dudes who crushed it who did really well 
and even like peers that I admired. And then there were guys who I was like, oh, God, I, I know he's a nice person, but I really don't wind up wind up like that, you know, 20 years down the road or 10 years down the road. Yeah. I, I mean, I think comedians are all uh, most, most of us are pretty condescending anyway. You know, yes. like, everybody just thinks, oh, well, they're doing that. Oh, my goodness. I, I would never. And then you're like, this dude bombing on stage right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Dude, that- I cry so like I, I made a note of that too, and I was starting out too, because I, I hated guys that sat in the back of the room and like because you realize at a certain point it's insecurity and nervous shit. So it comes out really negative about everybody else that's on stage. And you're just like, oh dude, you know you're gonna eat it when you go up there, right? Like you know that's bad energy that you're taking on stage with you when you're just like, look at this fucking clown. Like you don't know that guy. He could be having a bad set, he could be a great comic, like. You know, I mean, I've had I've had fucking roughs. I've been doing it for 16 years. I still have sets where sometimes I'm like, but at this point in the game, it's funny because I'll go. Yeah, I know what I did and I was not in the mood and uh, I fucking ate it. But it's weird how like people will just li- like leave you at that place, no matter what your stature is in the business. They're just like, uh, yeah, that guy fucking ate it. And I will remember that and let him relive it for the rest of his life. <laughs> You're like, Fuck. Yeah, like everybody, everyone's a critic. And so yeah. I- I, I try not to do that, um, mm-hmm. you know. And so that's what I say. I try, I try to take the good and like everybody, like I see. It's like even people who like do the same material from like years and years ago. But I mean, so that's what I'm saying. Like I'm looking like, oh, it's, you know, the good side is like you know, people are laughing. That, yeah. That's like, like you know, and some people aren't laughing at other stuff. But um, yeah, yeah. And it's like you know, so I just think you got to you know as for as a comedian, I think like taking the good and people. Not, that's why like people are like, who's your favorite comedian? Like who don't you like? And I was like, yeah, anybody who gets on the stage, I kind of have like a respect for it because sure. it does take a lot to get up there and then to do stuff. And then um, I think that's why like comedy is what, such a beautiful art form because it's like it's always changing. Mm-hmm. Um, it's like, you know, you could do one joke one night and kill. Um, and then like next time it's like different. Like I, I had a Cosby bit before. I never like fully like developed the way I wanted to, but it was like on the way. But then like now you say the word Cosby and it's like it's like a yeah. whole different feel. Yeah. Like from from before, just like that. Before people like kind of let a smile at first. Now it's like you gotta like reshape things for all the time. And like you know, uh, even like you're talking about Clinton. Um, now like now they got uh, the the Monica Lewinsky. Um, series oh yeah, about. and something like it's yeah. relevant again. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know. So yeah, now uh, it did come back. Yeah, you know. So I mean, things are always shifting and changing, and like you have to you know mold along with that uh, with the art. So. Um, yeah, that's what I'm saying. There's always something to learn, always something like to grow from. And yeah, I think you can take something, even people who are, you know, if you're not doing well, you can learn from that, like what yeah. not to do, or like, you know, even like the little things they did well in like the bad set. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. I, but it's funny. Yeah, I think a lot, most comedians are just, you know, are, have the air. And that's why I try to fight because I probably do a little bit too. I had that air superior, like, oh, yeah, well, oh, that, he should. Yeah, yeah. And like, da, 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 da. And so, or if it's like a bad audience and you're like, I'm going to get him, I'll get him. And like <laughs> literally like the 15 people before you died and you're like, are you going to get him though? <laughs> you know what I mean? You're like, probably not. Um, but yeah, it's weird too. Like, I feel like, um, you know, like the older guys who have done it or whatever, sometimes I take, uh, you know, like, um, God, it's like, it's okay, well, like a reprieve almost when I see them doing shit that I think, oh my God, this guy's been on a million HBO specials or whatever, and they're doing that trick, that's pretty great. You know what I mean? Where you feel like, like you were talking earlier before about doing stuff that you felt was cheating maybe, mm-hmm. like in the beginning of your career when you're doing flourishes or whatever, and then you see a well-established dude and you're like, oh man, they're just they're just fucking doing their shit. They're just telling jokes. They're not worried about you know, what, what looks easy or whatever. They're just making people laugh on stage. Mm-hmm. And you know, because I don't know if when you started, did people give you like really bullshit rules for stand up where they were like, you know, if you're emceeing, don't improvise with the crowd and don't be off the cuff and just do your set and like yada, yada, yada. I realized that means nothing. And it's more about the club owner or the headliners in security than it is about like, you know, not like comedy rules. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That, uh, yeah. I agree. It's mostly, um, I did this one, uh, club a, a lot, but you know, they really wanted you to kind of like stick, I up front and like ask my birthday da, 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 and then yeah bits and like don't do this and don't do that and I'm like mm, do what I'm, I'm gonna do what I want to do <laughs> yeah yeah you just fucking do it I, I had the mentality early on was like every time I would go to a comedy club even even when I began headlining I was like um 
I'm going to treat this as this is my last time at this place and I'm just going to have as much fun as I can and then whatever. And I feel like, you know, because I feel like a lot of people kind of put pressure on the venue, like, like put pressure on themselves about the venue they're performing in. And I don't give a fuck about the venue because it's just a building. Like they're going to come and go. They're going to go out of business and comedians are the only ones that survive. We survived the pandemic when a million comedy clubs closed. You want to know why? Because they didn't have us. That's the end of it. So without us, there's no show. There's no anything. So when people are like, oh, this is a great comedy club. And I'm like, the comedians that were in there were great. <laughs> but the club itself, you know, it's just a building. Somebody rented a room. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it is. I mean, also, I think everything does kind of work hand in hand in, in a way. But you're right. Like, I think the comedians. I mean, but I think everybody kind of has to work together in a way. Because, I mean, a lot of this, this stuff. I, you do know when you have a world a well-run establishment and yes you also know what is not very well run true um and hopefully the audience you know you always think of the audience like are they having a good time are they having a great experience like from that side um yeah but then you know i yeah i think it's just it's that thing where like you don't want the club to fit like to get too big you know anybody get too big for their britches in a way <laughs> yeah because i mean like how many clubs are there honestly that are like like legit like a, like comedy store has a right to have any kind of reputation it wants i understand the the aura around that place right like even like you know when i was out in la and i was there and stuff like that you can just feel it when you're there so that absolutely has an impact on you you know the improv um you know and then there's a maybe like a couple like comedy seller or whatever but it's weird to me when you go to these other venues sometimes and they're like we're an a-list club and i'm like no, you're not <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Where they have like this superior attitude about what you, what you can and can't do on stage and what they're going to feed you and stuff like that. And it's like, just be decent to us and we'll be fine. We'll be good. Yeah. It's weird. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, I agree. I think it's the, um, what was I about to say? The, um, when I think, yeah, you just want everybody to treat people, people good. Yeah. But you get like some clubs get to the point where like they want to, um, when they start treating people bad, you can't like you can't even get access to it or different things. You're like, but I do think there's something to say. Like at the same time, like if people like everybody can't do it. Like Mitzi at, at the right. uh, at the store, right? Like people giving her a hard time. But at the same time, like can everybody do the same thing? You know, sure. if it was that easy. Everybody else would have done it in a way. Absolutely. So, I mean, I think you're entitled to have your own rules and different things. But at the same time, you just like at the, yeah, be do good by people. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, I mean, like you you run your shows or whatever, and I've ne like I've never felt uncomfortable at them. Everybody's always having a good time. Everybody's in high spirits. It's a smooth thing. I feel like it's, you know, not that it's not a hard thing to do, but I feel like that model is not like if you just, you know, uh, have the right mindset about it and go about it the right way. It's easy to do. It's just like, but I've been to the, you know, you've been to those rooms where you're like, do you even want me here? <laughs> where you're just kind of like you're like i don't even know what's going on right now it's fucking weird as shit yeah did you go back did you uh did you start on the road or at, at all early or anything like that or did you did you take some time and hang around dc for a bit uh i, I think i was mostly i did more dc than yeah than the road. um i think the cool thing about the it, it is a very like multi uh you know a very diverse Fashion. place yeah. so i think and then the, it's always been a pretty vibrant like comedy scene. So I think yeah. like in most nights you can go like like sometimes like, four or five different rooms like every night. Um diff you know, different crowds, like smart crowds. Um yeah. <laughs> and because it's such a cosmopolitan city, like in a lot of uh you know, a lot of the transient uh people that come in. So yeah, you get a little bit of everybody and so you kinda can adapt and um I do think it's a great place to kind of grow. So I think a lot of the you know DC comics who end up going to New York usually come back down or like are still here a lot of the times because it's you know you can really get your chops and I think also that's why like I think DC has like some of the most uh, famous comedians or like some of the top comedians all like come from DC. Um, yeah, whether people know it or not, like you know or DC, the DMV Chappelle, area. Yeah, like, yeah, Chappelle, Martin Lawrence, like Wanda Sykes, Patton yep. Oswalt. Um, uh, let's yeah, look, like, the list goes on and on. Like, I, and the people like I didn't even realize, oh, they're from DC too. So, um, DC yeah, is one of my favorite places to perform. I mean, I love New York, obviously, or whatever, but like DC, Boston, um, you know, uh, there's like just a few others, you know, that I just really love, but like DC is just one of the best. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Yeah. So I definitely think it's a good place to develop and grow and grow your material. And then you don't have to like go a whole lot of places to be, to do that here. Whereas yeah. other, you know, some places, um, you know, then you can get, you do have a good feel. Like I can, uh, <laughs> I was watching say earlier that I was watching some old clips or whatever. And I did like this room was like all like, uh, like literally like 45 minutes out of the city. Like it's you in the rural country. So no. yeah, it's a big difference. And it was like a republic, like these, we all these like Republican Trump supporters, and I was like, oh. right. I was, you know, we had ended up having the ball with them, but then you come here and like, you know, twenty minutes, fifteen minutes here, there, like you all have all these different diverse people, and uh, you know, this is, you know, so yeah, you get a good a good feel of a lot of things. I think DC was one of the few pl few places I would go where I knew I could do my political stuff right up front. I didn't have to ease into it. They were smart. They understood it. You know, they got it right away and then I could fuck around and do whatever I want. But it's some, you know, when I would go anywhere else on the road, sometimes I'd have to like get them to like me first. And then I could kind of state my opinions through jokes and stuff like towards the end, by the time they already liked me. But DC, you could just go right into it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, that's what I like. And I, I'm, I like to do a lot of political stuff uh, too. So like it's, uh, it had like a point to what I'm saying. Like, so yeah, yeah it's, it's a cool, cool place to do that here. And I think, Whereas other places you have to leave like water things down or yep. you gotta give it a spin. Like whereas here you can kind of like really but then you can you can also understand those nuances here too. Mm -hmm. I think. Even though they're like, you know, more um yeah, like they're more understanding and like kind of can think through things a little bit better. Uh no, yeah. but yeah. yeah. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. No, I agree, man. It's it's fucking awesome. Um, are you planning to do like more more stuff? Because you're going out to do the dry bar comedy thing. And you also have something going on with Comedy Central. If I'm, if I'm allowed to talk about that, or is that still hush hush? Uh, a little, little bit. I did like, um, yeah, they had a new show coming out, so I did some little, some little pieces for that. That's awesome. So when sure. is that? Is that you know when the air date is? Um, no, I think some of it's uh, been come. I think it just started coming out, but then I think some of my stuff may come out a little later too. So oh, okay, cool. Pieces. Yeah, because yeah. you got a lot of stuff coming out. Yeah. So. And you also had an M, uh, a show on Amazon, didn't you? Yeah, my um, Tommy Taylor show. Yeah, and, uh, I Scott caught a few of those. Wow, <laughs> that was yeah. great, man. Yeah, I put that up, and then so um, I had uh, gonna put some uh, more up, and then start shooting like a new season pretty soon. So oh, that's fucking sick, dude. I'm getting it. Yeah, get. I mean, fuck yeah, man. Um, and do you still auditioning and stuff, acting roles? Yeah, yeah, all the time. I, I think that's one thing I love about the pandemic. Now is like I can do everything from home. Instead yeah, I was gonna say, how are you adjusting to the to the? Yeah, home, I, lo uh, I love it. Like everything awesome. is like remote. Like I just did this, um, uh, like even voiceover stuff. Like yeah, you can like everything is shooting, and sometimes you shoot stuff and like they just use it for, um, uh, yeah, use it in the actual projects. Like you're booking stuff off of like just your cell phone camera and. Oh, that's um, great. Yeah, it's great. Like I did a big thing with Auto Trader, so they have this thing with Keenan Thompson. So I would help do some of the voiceover and um actually help like you know develop some of the content there or whatever so that that was pretty cool but yeah i was like right from home mm -hmm. and i think that's the thing it, it does get a little tight like i'll come to new york and then like you tell all day to do like audition is like 10 20 seconds you know yeah. like you do like a little line like let's do this all right thank you okay you hold your hand up all right thank you i'm <laughs> like, not even do it then you're like you're gone so uh man i think yeah this is like um yeah, changing the game, I think. So, yeah, you can do a lot. Yeah, do a lot of stuff. And then kind of really, like, get into, you know, you kind of get into, like, the auditions because you, like, you can do, if you need to, do a couple takes on your right. own. But then you got the Zoom stuff where people just, like, you know, you can, that. But a lot of times you can, like, do yourself tapes. And, um, yeah, I, I really like how it's, uh, how this transition is going. Yeah, you right. Find, if, you find it good? Like, you, you like it better? Yeah, me too, man. I feel like it definitely leveled like the playing field a little bit. And like I'm getting just, uh, you know, more stuff because my agents in L.A. And most of the time is when I go out there is when I would do all the auditions. So I'd spend like a bunch of time out in Los Angeles um, and then go on auditions there. And then since the pandemic hit, they were just like, we're just going to fucking send them to you. <laughs> it's like, That's fine by me. Uh, so, yeah, I just loved uh, I loved just chilling out in my room and doing that kind of shit and whatever. And um just did a voiceover audition uh, a couple days ago or whatever. And it's great. You just sit, I've got all the equipment. I bought everything I needed to, so I don't need to go anywhere. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's nice, man. It's, it's weird because like, I don't know for me, when we saw, um, you know, the talk shows doing like struggling to do their camera shit, 
You know what I mean? Like basically what YouTubers have been doing for years. And then like they had no audience. You know what I mean? I was like, I was like, oh my God, this makes so much more sense. Like if you like we could do the same shit and you know, it'll be it'll be kind of fine. It'll be fun, you know. And here we are. And here we are. Cut to, but no Cthulhu. So honestly, how good could we be? Uh, <laughs> couldn't that get happens that in post now. That's what I said. <laughs> yeah. I oh, turn into the Cthulhu. Yes, the mega return. Yes, if, I, <laughs> if I had to fucking do that shit in post, I'd kill myself. That'd be it. I would be so miserable. <laughs> I thought it was going to work, but it didn't. <laughs> Um, I got to ask you two questions. We kept you for an hour. I don't want to keep you from your other gig. So we ask these to every guest that's on the show. Uh, one of them is if you can go back in time and tell your younger self something that would help you today, what would it be? Get Bitcoin when it was point zero 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 one <laughs> cent and just put everything on it. <laughs> yeah, everything, everything on Bitcoin. That's fucking great. Um, and the other one is what had to end in your life, good or bad, for you to wind up where you are today? I'll say that again. What had to end in your life, good or bad, that had that led you to where you are today? What had to end? Yep. Uh, I don't. <laughs> Cops show up. Um, relation. I guess relationships. Uh, I, I don't know. All of them. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> I'm true. literally sitting in my car as ambulances go by, talking to two men <laughs> on the internet. So, uh, yeah, I, I'm going to go with relationships. <laughs> oh, that's fucking great. I love it. I feel, were you, were you one of those dudes who was, like, real close to, like, the the giving up the show business thing for, like, a home life marriage situation? Um, no, I don't think I ever got that far. All right. That's probably <laughs> I, a good thing. Yeah. I don't know. That's what I'm saying. I don't know if it was me or if it was them, but I feel like, you know, the women, there are some, yeah, the women that that you like. Cause I think sometimes like as for men, I think, you know, off the bat, like whether like somebody is like wife or relationship material, like, yeah. some, like you, you try to check yourself. Oh, look, I'll try that. Let's see if we make this thing work. But I think, you know, off the bat, but then sometimes the women that you really know, like something always happens with them. Yeah. Uh, for me, at least there's always something or um, they weren't end up being not that well adjusted at something or just yeah. some like craziness going on. Um, yeah, like they had some baggage, and she's like, "Oh, dang!" But everything seemed cool at first, and yeah, so I don't know. So I think it's more them than me, but I guess I just got to, uh, or maybe it I might be meet more people. Yeah, uh, may, or meet more people. Sometimes you get into fucking habits, and you get a cyclical thing going on where you just wind up being attracted to the same type. But like, if I look back, sometimes I'm like, "Oh my god, yeah!" Every iteration of a girl is still. Uh, Sarah Queen saying, says, "What are you still single? Look at this, Tommy. <laughs> we gotta love connection about that. We might set you up right now." <laughs> this is leading into our live dating show that we're doing on Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> Tell Clara what that Instagram is, Tommy. You have that very impressive Instagram of you touring the world. It's some, I, I think it's one of my oh, favorite yeah. ones to watch. Fuck the Instagram. <laughs> Tell her what your OnlyFans is, man. Uh, <laughs> we all started a secret one during. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, but it was. Uh, I don't know the 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 like really like I you know one of the things I know I'm not like marriage material I in my head can never picture somebody at a wedding making a speech about me going so and so is so lucky to have found <laughs> like that is not a thing that that plan because every wedding I've been to you know some fucking woman bridesmaid whatever it is is like making this crying speech like you know, I'm so lucky Susan found Tim. I it's I've I've never pictured myself in that position where somebody's going like they're really like I feel like it'd be like, you know, they were kind of okay together. <laughs> None of us saw this coming, and uh, enjoy the cake. Yeah, I think most men from New Jersey probably had that same. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's, it, I think it's the culture up there. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But I don't know. I, that's the thing. I do think I'm a, I'm a good catch. I'm a good guy. Um, yeah. I, I yeah. As comedian, like the entertainment space, I think like you, um, it's hard to just be like at like at home or just like be like that homebody. Um, yeah. Yeah, because that that's kind of counter culture to like what you're doing in a way. So absolutely. Uh, yeah, I always wonder how like 
I do see people do it, but yeah, how like how effective is it really? I think that's why like a lot of those Hollywood relationships always end up breaking up, and, or like totally. people end up like just taking time off. Like uh, who's um was it Ryan Reynolds just recently? He's like I'm giving up acting oh. for a while. Yeah, you know, focusing yeah. on family life because yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't really don't understand how you um can fully balance it too, unless somebody's just so patient or whatever. But at the same time, like that patience, like how long does that last? I agree. And the other thing is too, is like, you don't even realize like how stable (laughs) your partner has to be in order to handle going out, you going out on the road, leaving, like how many people do we know that we're not dating who can't fucking entertain themselves for an hour? (laughs) You know, imagine trying to be committed to somebody and then going, yeah, I guess I won't see you for a few weeks. Peace. I I, I had a, uh, a woman tell me like, I think we did like a, a while back. We said, like, yeah, you never invited me to any of your comedy shows. Da, 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 da. And I'm like, why would I? And, and it's not <laughs> like, but that's the thing. I, like sometimes like, I mean, you could have like, so communication is really big, obviously, but sure. I think even something like that is like most of the time is, is comics. So you're out there. You're not, people think of comics like, oh, it's just fun. You're out there having fun. But no, like you're really like stressed out at the time trying to think what you're going to like working on. You're developing material. Yeah, so, like, I agree. Your shows, like, you know, like 80% of your shows, like, it's like work shows, right? It's like, yeah. you're, just, you're just crafting it. And then like for your bigger shows, which you're like actually performing, performing. Yeah. And so even though in those big shows, it's like, it's not like, oh, well, I'm going to bring a date. Cause like you're right. Uh, you're like in your, you got to get in your space or whatever. Yeah. And I so agree. Like, yeah. And it, if you do bring a date, so unless you're like just that balance or like, you know, you're not, um, especially like, especially as you're growing in it, but like when you're there, sometimes though, you know, you can just like, go through the motions or whatever, but you really got to get, you know, you want to be in that good space and have your time. And if that person doesn't realize that, cause I did a big theater show. I remember my first theater show, um, I had the girl day and she came and, um, she had been to comedy shows with me before. So she know, like, I knew she knew, like, I, you know, at the moment, like I had to like, kind of get, get in my yeah. space, figure out what I'm like going to talk about. Like, you know, and this was like a big thing. And it was like, um, <laughs> it was a whole crazy, I'm going to the whole story. But and then she was like, but she kind of got into like the girl. He was like, "Why are you not talking to me?" Da, 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 da. And I was like, "Really? Like at this, at this big moment? Like now you're gonna go into all this?" And it's like you know you're nervous. You like you're trying to like, all right, what are my jokes? Like what am I gonna say? Like how how am I gonna yeah. adapt? Like if this doesn't, it's like all the different variables. But yeah, so I think yeah, it's hard. It's hard to even explain. It. I was like, "Well, you performed yesterday. You can't. Why you can't? Right? Or why can't why can't I come?" And then like a lot of times, like all right, well I don't. Most of the time I don't even know where I'm performing at. So I'm like, I'm gonna go hit like three or four rooms but like when am i gonna do it like i can't really right. tell you you know so um and it sounds like if you're trying to explain that or even if i'm trying to verbalize it like how do i verbalize it somehow? i know i can tell yeah and it but it is like that too because at the same time is when you're trying to bounce around from room to room, room if a person who doesn't understand what you're doing gets tired of it they'll start to put it in your head that what you're doing is useless they're like well i don't understand why you're doing this is this what you're doing every night you're just going out from and it's like dude i have a process this is how I get good. Relax, you know what I mean? Like, if you don't want to come, don't come. I had a uh, somebody I was dating. She was in the audience at one time, and I we had got into an argument because she said I didn't make eye contact with her during the whole show from the stage, and I was like, I don't know where the fuck you're sitting. Like, you know what I mean? Like, I'm like, you're you're mad at me because I didn't find you while I'm working. It's insane. It's yeah. it's just crazy, and they don't understand too. It's like, and you're a little were... man, so it's even harder for you to see over the stage. <laughs> like how? exactly i mean it's a stage isn't that high what am i gonna do (laughs) yeah it's just weird and it was like i hated when um i mean in the beginning when i was doing stand-up when i was like in my early 20s like it was a good it was a good place to bring a date because it was just kind of like a you know you're doing stand-up it was a novelty thing it was kind of fun and there was a girl in the audience and that was great you got then when you act absolutely free drink dude you have no idea i'd be like yeah you should come out to a show i'm doing a thing uh i'll get you free drinks they'd be like absolutely and i'm like or free food and you just kind of do that kind of shit and then you go do your show and you have fun and then you go back and have more fun um but then when you're dating it's like you know i hated it like i had a lot of girlfriends who would make it about them so like the show wasn't just you know it wasn't just me working at that point it was like i I told my friends and they want to come and then they're like asking you about the seating and the prices and oh susan's gonna come too and then they like saw their friends and and you're just like, oh god, I don't want to fucking deal with any of that. Yeah. And you sound like an asshole when you say it, but then you're just like, I guess I'm a fucking <laughs> asshole. Yeah, people are like you're literally like trying to get your 
like get your uh set and stuff together but then you gotta like worry about but then anyway, people always like well i'm coming then like oh well, okay well, oh man something just happened i messed up like what time to start again and then, like you're sitting there like texting five people yeah uh, like right what before time you're like no like, this is like i is yeah what time do you go <laughs> on well i don't fucking like i'm i'm going on like the show is two hours and i'm going on somewhere in between there yeah and so especially just, when you're just starting out like too like you don't have yeah. any like clout or whatever so when like you may not even get up <laughs> exactly <laughs> like, oh my god it's like yeah it's like comedy because like yeah people especially like la like you go out there you got to be there like an hour or hour two hours early to do what two three minutes yeah and that's just it though you have to find somebody yeah, who's so Right. Like you, you don't want the person you're with not to care about your comedy. You want them to care about it enough to give you space to do it, but also support you. And yeah. that is a rare fucking find. Yeah, and, and my thing, like, I don't want, I was, I never really wanted to, um, before, after I got the whole little phase of trying to like work material and everybody, I was like, all right, what do you think about this? What do you think about that? Or whatever. It was like, all right, let me just like, it's actually kind of work. It's like, like, this is like work for me. So yeah. when I'm out, like, you don't like, you never invite me to your job. <laughs> right? Like, you wouldn't even think about inviting me to your job. Like, that's right. What saying. All right. So, like, yeah, like most times it's working. Now, if it's something like I'm really excited about, like, hey, come to this big show, whatever, boom, boom, that's different. But, like, most of the time it's like, it's, it's work, really. Right. Yeah. I know, man. It's weird. Well, it will just be fucking 80 and single and doing so stand up. There, maybe you should date a comedian. <laughs> You know, I know that you, I, I, yeah, it's, it makes it compelling. You make a compelling argument and it's sad because <laughs> I really don't want it. That's like the last thing. Oh, build a bear wedding and it could be like a whole like thing. I think that'd be, <laughs> you son of, I love that you just, you just took that joke and made it your own. That's fun. Great. Yeah. I, that's, that's the thing too is like, you, oh, dude, this is so, I'm sure that I love that. Joke, Thank you, by the way. I, I appreciate that. It's one of my favorites. I haven't gotten to tell it in a while, but, um, the other thing too is like, have you ever seen those comics that are couples and like, for some reason, one of them will always make it about whatever they're doing about comedy. And I'm just like, they're like, Oh, like, you know, the grocery store, we do it for the material. And I'm just like, no, you fucking don't. <laughs> like, like, I don't like that. That irritates the shit out of me. Yeah. I think I'll, I will, I would be worried about like, like as people always like ended up on stage, like don't don't use me in your material. Yeah, but I, I just, think like they definitely would. Like all right, then they'll take it. Especially if you make it, they're like oh crap. oh totally. <laughs> I just don't want people to make comedy cute either. Like I don't like every girl has to do that kind of shit too. And they're like oh my god, I'm funny too. And I'm like, but not really. Like we, you know, oh god, not the well, not female comedy. I mean like regular like people I'm Burning dating. Bridges, who, John. No, like, no, no, no. I'm, I'm really burning bridges with potential dates. I'm talking about like women I've dated who are not comics who are just like, <laughs> oh, I'm also like, I give him his best jokes. And I'm like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's cute. I think I'm figuring yeah, out why maybe, I'm alone. Maybe, maybe you should be single, buddy. <laughs> I think you take some time just to work on you. Give, give yourself another pandemic. How about that? Just... Give yourself another pandemic. That's great. Tommy's like, revamp that business. It's not the customer at this point. <laughs> yeah. <it's... laughs> yeah. The, more it, I'm, yeah. The, more, the more I'm talking about it. Tom, he had somebody he was going to set me up with. And now he's like, you know what? I'm thinking I'm going to. No, it's not going to happen. <laughs> um, dude, I don't want to keep you any longer, but thank you for coming on, man. It's a, always a fucking blast to talk to you. Oh, yeah, definitely, bro. Always yeah. a good time. Appreciate you uh, having me. Yeah. Another time, man. Guess it. I like, I like the Such setup. Thank you. Thanks, man. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. And uh, I hope we get to do some gigs together soon. I'll be in D.C. Um, January 21st to the 23rd, okay. which I know is like a couple months away, but it'll be here before we know it. I thought you were about to say January 6th. I was like, okay, well, you're coming. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to find that old man at the end of the video who's screaming again. I, I love that dude. I don't know where he is, but I hope he's well. We'll find him. <laughs> yeah. um, all right, cool, man. We'll plug all your stuff. And uh, anytime you want to come back on, you know, you got anything to plug, let us know. Uh, uh, oh, there we go. I kind of went in there. Yeah, I appreciate you guys. Um, always good uh, being on the dystopia. Tonight. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Thanks, man. Thanks so much, man. Yep. Take care. We'll definitely see you next time. Later. Uh, Utopia tonight.